Welcome to this presentation, which is part of the Proceedings of HRI 2020. My name is Hannah Pelikan, and I work together with Professor Matthias Brod and Professor Ledo Keberlik at Linköping University in Sweden. We studied how people make sense of a Cosmo robot's displayed emotions. So what comes to mind when you think of emotions? When have you smiled for the last time? Robot emotions are usually studied under controlled circumstances. Study participants are asked to categorize particular robot behavior or to rate how well it is recognizable as a particular emotion. But what about robot emotions in the real world? How do people actually react when a robot shows emotion behavior? To answer this question, we collected and analyzed video data of human-robot interaction in people's homes. We worked with four German adult pairs who interacted with a robot for a short time while the researcher was in control of the robot. In the second study, we worked with four Swedish families who kept the robot for several days and videotaped themselves. We only recorded them on drop-off and pick-up of the robot. All participants signed informed consent before any recordings were made. To get more insights into the designer's perspective, we also interviewed the robot's sound designer. When analyzing the data, we took a multimodal conversation analysis perspective, which focuses on partic participants' demonstrated understandings of actions on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. We worked with a Cosmo robot, a commercial toy robot, which is develop developed by Anki. It has a variety of different animations, involving sounds, animated eyes, and movements. It can recognize faces and its toy cubes, but it does not actually have speech recognition. Cosmo is controlled through a smartphone app, which allows for different modes of play. Before we dive into the videos from family homes, I want to address one question. Why should robots display emotions at all? There's been different approaches, but the most important one for this paper is the quite recent argument in HRI that emotions are not just nice extras or random outbursts, but they are crucial in calibrating mutual understanding. Conversation analysis has problematized the relationship between emotion as a public display and what you actually feel inside. It is only the displayed, the public emotions, that others actually have access to and can react upon. So we don't know that somebody is sad until they show it. You may feel sad inside, but you can still laugh about a joke. So we focus on how people achieve emotion socially and interactionally, and how emotion is co-constructed by several people. Take the example of the joke, people laugh together. Emotion in human-human interaction is not a random outburst, but usually a response to a previous event. And it is also interpreted in the context of such previous events. So for example, laughter about a joke that just came before. So this is what we know from human interaction. Let's see how this plays out in human-robot interaction. We picked one happy and one sad animation and analyzed them in real-world settings. The happy animation that I'm going to show you occurs towards the end of a name-blowing activity where Cosmo learns a person's face. While this is happening, the people have to stay idle, and as the sound designer explained, at the end of this long activity, they try to indicate that Cosmo is happy to meet you. So now let's see how this animation looks like in the real world. Try to focus on how participants react. And I'm going to warn you, there's a bleep at the beginning of the video because I bleeped out the participants' names. Yeah! So this adult pair played with the robot for about 20 minutes and then they called their son to come and see the robot as well. And they had Cosmo learn his name. So the bleeps were where Cosmo said his name. I'm gonna walk you through the transcript of this video very quickly. So Cosmo says the name twice. This is where the bleeps were. I called uh, the participant Jonas. And they smile, the mother laughs, and then Cosmo plays the happy animation. In response, the son is, son is laughing, and you can hear his laughter on the, on the video. But what I want to stress here is that we get a non-verbal response. We don't get any talk, he doesn't say anything to the robot back, we just get like this, ha ha, and then 
The interaction moves on. The dad changes the topic, asks about another robot. We have 26 instances of this happy animation. And in the majority, we get nonverbal responses like these, and the interaction just continues smoothly. So let's have a look at the sad animation, which is in the context of a fist bump activity. So Cosmo will lift its arms, trying to get you to bump your fists against them. And if you're not quick enough or no fist bump is detected, Cosmo will play this animation. Again, let's check how this plays out in, in the real world and try to focus how participants react after the uh, animation. So again, I'm going to walk you through a quick transcript. So the mother is trying to explain to her little son that he should do a fist bump. The son is too slow, she, he tries to actually fist bump his mother, and then Cosmo initiates the sad animation. We get this wow sound, and already then the daughter offers her explanation. She says, he is sad. We get a verbal response. Compare this to the happy animation where we just get like laughter or in other cases an embodied response. But we don't actually get a verbal response in the happy animations, whereas here she verbalizes her explanation. And as the interaction continues, Cosmo plays the, the rest of this animation and the mother responds, yeah, are you sad? And starts petting the robot. So I'm not so interested in the comforting and petting here, but what's interesting is that she too demonstrates how she makes sense of the uh, emotion display in a verbal man manner. They both suggest that Cosmo is sad. And interestingly enough, it doesn't end here. They don't just move on, but the mother actually jumps back and offers to do a fist bump with Cosmo, reconsidering what has happened before and trying to provide the missing action. We have 11 fist bumps that involve this sad animation. And when people knew that the robot was trying to get them to do something, then they actually reacted in surprisingly similar ways. We have another instance also with a Swedish family with a mother who does almost exactly the same way, comforting the robot trying to uh, fix the trouble by doing the fist bump. So what do we learn from all this? First observation. Happiness seems to imply that interaction can move on, so we can use it as a go-ahead signal. Sadness, in contrast, makes people reconsider their preceding actions. So it may function as an interactional rewind button, actually. Second observation. People interpret emotion displays in the context of immediately, immediately preceding actions. You saw it with the fist bump. If there's a sad animation just after a failed fist bump, people will try to fix it by doing the fist bump. Make use of this context. Take the sequential context into account when using emotions in your design. For example, when you learn a person's face and you want to indicate that, that it was successful, Play the emotion animation right after to indicate that the action was successfully completed. And then you can move on saying the name and all other things. Third and final observation for this presentation. Emotion displays have no rigid meaning. They leave room for people's interpretation. And actually, their interpretation may differ from the designer's intentions. You can read more in the paper. We can use emotions to communicate quickly in a semantically underspecified way how the interaction may evolve in general terms. So we suggest that emotions can actually be used to communicate quickly and vaguely. For human robot collaboration, that could mean using an emotion display can help to quickly communicate that there's trouble. Of course, it's vague and you don't know immediately what it is about. But if it's necessary, you can add a slower and more specific verbal explanation after. So we contribute a study of robot emotion displays in everyday interaction in people's homes. We demonstrate that emotion displays can have a range of different interpretations, and they might not always just fit one category, but that's not a problem. Emotion can be used as a resource for communicating quickly and vaguely, and in that, happiness might work to move the interaction forward, whereas sadness can work as an interactional rewind button that indicates trouble. So thank you for watching. And don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions or comments.